71 to 70 at home to advance to the semifinal round. Also taking place uh, this afternoon, Illinois Springfield is at Columbia. Springfield, the number three seed, and Columbia, the number two. So the top four seeds have advanced in the AMC. And if we have a final from that game in Columbia this afternoon before we sign off, we will certainly pass that along in this afternoon. We'll be working hard to get updates from Columbia, Missouri. As uh, McHenry, if they win today, they will play the winner of that one. And that game would be here at home on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. as Bearcats, the number one seed, an undefeated conference season. 14-0. They won their first round game 79-50 here this past Thursday night against Harris Stowe. So the Bearcats, 27-4 on the season. They're ranked fifth in the country. They've won 20 consecutive games, the nation's longest winning streak in NAI Division I. That game Thursday, the Bearcats won their 300th game here in this uh, building that opened up in the fall of 1988 against only 50 losses and career win number 992 for Coach Statham in his 43rd season. For the Bearcats, they will start at one guard Eric Palm. 6'2", senior from McChesney Park out of Harlem High School. At the other guard spot, Andy Wolf. He's a 6'1", sophomore from Centralia, Illinois, out of Metro East Lutheran High School. At one forward, Brad Copeland. He's a 6'7", sophomore from O'Fallon. And the other forward is Eric Hobby, a 6'6", sophomore from Vandalia. And the man in the middle, Ken Demmer. He is a 6'7", junior from Aviston out of Greece. And, of course, the Bearcats coached by Harry Statham, assisted by Eric Eckelbarger, Tim Becker, and the student coach, Greg Cassidy. So, again, for the Hannibal Grange Tro Trojans, 13 and 18, Schmechtig, Potts, Reading, Gilbert, and Fernandez. And for the Bearcats, they will start Palm, Wolf, Copeland, Hobby, and Detmer. And the Cats come in, as I said, 27 and 4 on the season, ranked number 5 in the country in NEI Division 1. And these next two games, if the Bearcats can, can win out, that would uh, perhaps get them that top five seed, and they might even have a chance at a, a top four seed at the National Tournament in Kansas City that begins on March the 18th. The number two team has already lost in their conference tournament, Oklahoma Baptist. That's their second loss in, in the past uh, week and a half. So we're going to have the... Uh, Bearcat Fit Five song and following that the national anthem here in just a moment. And after that, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this game. Bearcats have had some spirited contests with Hannibal this year. Narrowly won uh, at Hannibal. That game uh, took place back on the 24th of January. 68-65 was the final. Uh, pulled away late to win 77-64 here in Lebanon on February the 21st, the second to last uh, conference game and the last conference home game of the regular season. And now, Bearcats again uh, riding a 20-game winning streak coming into this game this afternoon. Eric Palm uh, led the way on Thursday with 16 points. Hobby had 14 and 4 assists. Sean Rockers had 12 points off the bench. Brad Copeland had 11 in a balanced scoring attack. And Ken Detmer, 10. Bearcats swept the regular season series with Hannibal. And now we'll have our national anthem uh, performed by the McKendry Student Band.
across here in Lebanon, Illinois. And uh, controversy before the game, uh, as the uh, sports writer for the local paper was kicked out of the gym because one of the officials didn't like what was written about him. In uh, following that game up in Springfield, which was maybe the most physical college game I've ever seen in 25 plus years of watching McKinley basketball. But uh, a lot of discussion went on before the game, and I still don't see our friend Dave in the building, so he might be lurking out in the uh, lobby. But that would seem to be a blatant violation of the uh, Bill of Rights Amendment that protects free speech in this country, did not allow him to come in here and do his job, and all he did was quote someone in the paper involving uh, a controversial event that happened during the game, which Paul Staten got an extremely rare technical foul. So we'll uh, try not to dwell on that, and hopefully that official uh, will be a factor here this afternoon. Seven senior from Aurora, Colorado is in there. He wins the tip. So scratch Adam Potts and replace him with Adam with Brian Festog. So Hannibal will be on offense first in their road red jerseys with navy blue and white trim. Bearcats in their home white uniforms with purple numerals trimmed in red. Hannibal lobs it down low to Reading. Cut off on the baseline. Kicks it out top to Festog. His Jumper from the right side, no good. Rebounded by Hobby. Hobby leads the Bearcats in rebounding on the season at more than seven per game. Cats on offense for the first time. Out top, Hobby, top of the key, three pointer. No good. Schmechtig with the long rebound at the free throw line. Hobby had a nice release on that shot, but it came up just a little short. And with the ball out top, Cats in a man to man defense as you would expect, and now 1901, we've got a cheap foul called away from the ball. And Hobby, who never complains to the official, had something to say about that. Hobby picks up his first foul, and I didn't see any contact at all on that play. And I look for these officials to call everything close in this game because they are got a traveling violation called on Hannibal. Wolf brings it up the floor, left side to Hobby. To Copeland, and now we've got a foul under the basket and another cheap foul. This one goes against Hannibal. The officials are early on trying to make themselves noticed out there instead of letting the players uh, take care of things. Cats bounce it into him to uh, Paul underneath Hobby. I'd like to see that for Hobby backing in the defender. You don't see him do that enough. He, with his leaping ability, is so dangerous. And now the ball thrown away by Hannibal. Two consecutive turnovers for the Trojans. Bearcats lead it two to nothing. 
as we have played a minute and a half here in Lebanon. Wolf brings it up the floor. The palm lobs it to the free throw line to Detmer. Back to Wolf. The palm jumper right elbow is no good as it bounced high in the air. Battle for the rebound, and Hannibal comes away with it. We will head the other direction. Gilbert has it. Bullet pass underneath goes out of bounds. Three consecutive turnovers for Hannibal, and this is good news for the Bearcats as they need to keep that defensive pressure on Hannibal. Hannibal's a team that if you let him hang with you, they can be very dangerous. Cats get it at the other end, under the block to Detmer, out to a wide open Wolf for three, no good. Bobby chases down the rebound. He kicks it out to Palm, right side Wolf to Copeland, over to Palm, fakes the three. Palm falls down, gets it to Hobby, top of the key. This time in and out. Battle for the rebound. Copeland tips it to himself. Copeland fouled, no call, and Handel hits the other way. Reading, doesn't have a shot, now jumps into somebody and draws a foul. Reading nearly turned the ball over. Officials don't have any idea what to call here. Official blew his whistle because obviously something happened there. It should have been a traveling violation of Reading. Instead, they call a foul on Palm, his first. Palm was just standing there, and Reading jumped into him because he had lost his balance and didn't have a shot. Hannibal lobs it way out top to Gilbert. Cats pressuring out top. Gilbert to uh, Potts, who's in the game. And now another traveling violation. Hannibal racking up the turnovers here early. They have not scored, and we're going to call a timeout. 17 15 to go. And our score, 2 to nothing. Kind of score you might expect from the Bearcat baseball team that's playing uh, just beyond the wall to my left right now. Coach Statham up on his feet. a few words in those timeouts for the most part. Bearcats almost always out on the floor long before the other team gets out of the huddle. We've not yet had a substitution for the pass. We get the updated stats. Uh, Bearcats one for five from the field. Hannibal has only attempted one shot and they've turned it over four times. So Hannibal 0 for one. Cats get it to Copeland. Front court's been moved. Copeland in the lane. Jump puck, no good. Detmer took the rebound right to Hannibal's Gilbert. And Potts brings it up the floor. All stolen away on top by Javi. Javi's going in for the mark. going to dunk that one, it was just a matter of how. So they threw down an old-fashioned two-hander as he got way above the rim. Four to nothing, Bearcats. And that'll go down as a, another turnover for Hannibal, their fifth. Still looking for their first basket. Reading doesn't have a shot, kicks it out. Gilbert wide open, shot in and out. Rebounded by Detmer. Wolf up the right side. To Palm. On the block to Copeland. Copeland backs in his man. Skip pass part toward Hobby. Bounce pass to Denver on the block. Denver out to Copeland. Copeland down the lane. Spin move. Forces up a shot. That's good. And he's up 6 55 to go first half. And with all the controversy with the officials before the game, the Bearcat players not letting that bother them a bit. They're off to a good start here. And now we've got a foul away from the ball at the other end. It's going to go against Hanson. Dog. I made a mistake earlier when I announced Fernando Fernandez in the starting lineup. That was uh, Adam Potts. So Hannibal playing that three guard offense at the other end. Cats get it down low to Detmer. The ball knocked out of bounds by Hannibal's Gilbert. Six nothing McKendry. We've played four and a half minutes. Palm will throw it in baseline right. Gets it into Hobby. Beyond the arc, out top to Wolf. Palm looking for a screen. Gets it right side from the Go Cats logo. Three pointer, no good. The Cats miss from long range. Copeland with the rebound. Goes down the lane. Placing 
Detmer. That's the first foul on Dillard. Team foul number three, Brad Copeland will shoot one free throw, under 50% on the year, and he makes it. Copeland now is at an even 50% for the season with that made free throw. Bearcats lead at nine to nothing. Not what we expected here from these two teams. Schmechtick has it on the top, pushes off on Palm, gets a screen, doesn't, doesn't have a shot, and hands it off to Potts. Potts got up at the baseline, and Palm deflects it out of bounds right in front of his table. Good defense thus far by the Bearcats. And throwing it in right in front of me will be the Trojans' Matt Ayers, who's into the game, 6'3", sophomore from Green City, Missouri. Potts gets into the line, shot blocked by Rockers, straight down to the ground. Cats have numbers. On the pass from uh, Wolf was too low for Copeland to corral and get to the over. And Pettiford, the six-foot freshman from St. Louis, is on the floor. Hannibal has played more than five minutes without scoring. They get it to reading, top of the key. Now we've got a foul on the perimeter that stops the clock with 14.41 to go here in the first half. And that foul's on Pettiford, who just checked into the game. Bounce pass inbounds, another foul. And that is two fouls on Pettiford. He's been, he's been in the game all of about 15 seconds and calls for two fouls, and now they bounce it into Schmechtig as the Bearcats fell asleep on defense, and he lays it up and in for Hannibal's first basket of the game. Had seven fouls called in a little over five minutes. Cats get it to Copeland on the block, out top to Rockers, over to Wolf, left wing, top to Keith Pettiford, right side Palm. Palm fouled, no call, dumps it out to Pettiford, into the corner, Wolf is open for three, good. Here's our score. The largest lead of the game for the Bearcats. Walking it up the right side is Potts. Hands it to Schmechtig. Preston Ponce it back door. Ball stolen away. Reading gets it back. And it out of bounds. You see it's pushing off on Wolf. Can't retain possession. Another Hannibal turnover. Hannibal really having trouble taking care of the basketball here in the early going. 12-2 McKendry. As we've got a very, very nice crowd here on a Saturday afternoon. Cats get it to Palm, right side, bounce pass to Copeland on the block. Out top to Rocker, swings it over to Wolf, left side. Wolf's going to drive it. Schmechtig down the right side. Pushes up on Palm, gets into the lane, shot no good. Battle for the rebound, Palm has it, he gets fouled and the call into the back court. Matt Ayers reached out and grabbed Palm. Checking back in for Hannibal is Brian Festog, and in for the first time, Tomas Trujillo, a 6'1 sophomore from Miami, Florida. And Hannibal's going to call another timeout. They're turning by a dozen. 15 24 to go, first half. This is the kind of start the Bearcats uh, wanted to get out to. from the field, just one of five from three-point range, one of one at the free throw line. 
only two turnovers for the Bearcats. Five points each for Wolf and Copeland. Hobby's got four. Palmer's not scored. He's only taken two shots. Palm bounces it underneath. The The ball left side for Hannibal is Ayers. Out top to Schmeckdick. Bounce pass to Reading on the block. Make that Ayers. Got away with the walk. Gets it to Trujillo. Trujillo, the left hander gonna put up a shot off the glass on the sideline, no good. Rockers switch down the rebound. Wolf gets it to Hobby. Shovel pass back to Copeland. He lays it up there. on the season, averaging 10.6. Gardner the In for Hannibal, Daryl Johnson, Johnny Tampley, and Fernando Fernandez. As they try to find some uh, players that can put the ball in the basket for them. Hannibal has not been a factor at all thus far. Bearcats on top, 18 to two. And Copeland at the line, 50% free throw shooter, no good. Copeland with nine points. First miss at the line today for the Bearcats. They lead it by a score of 18 to two. Really did not expect this kind of a margin. Hannibal's got more turnovers than they do shot attempts. Fernandez turns it over down low as Rockers got in there to bother him. Wolf leads the break to Heckard, who's into the game now, and Heckard calls for the charge. I don't agree with that one as Fernandez just fell down. Gilbert. Nice acting job. Gilbert was nowhere near set. Kyle Hickard, 6'3 freshman from Oakville. Now into the game as Paul gets a rest. And a big win last night for the Oakville Rockets. Coach John Cross, uh, former Bearcat Hall of Famer in attendance this afternoon. They'll be playing in the super section of SAU Carbondale on Tuesday night, and now we've got a foul away from the ball. It's on Fernando Fernandez. Illegal screen down low. So Hannibal with 